Welcome back to the homestead. I want to welcome all of my new subscribers. Man, it's so fun when we get some new friends to come join us on the Manti homestead. We're grateful that you're here. We're going to go into the greenhouse right now and pick some new tomatoes off of our uh, newly um, producing tomato plants. But first I want to introduce this video. This video is America is in danger and it is. You know it. I know it. It's evident. Um, as we are preparing here on the homestead for the 4th of July tomorrow, uh, we'll probably get this video out after the 4th of July, but we're going to discuss freedom, liberty, and what we did the last three years and why it will matter to you and your family and your freedoms coming up. But first things first, we got to go get some tomatoes. There is nothing better than a garden fresh tomato and nothing better than uh, harvesting a tomato this early on. <laughs> so July 3rd, and look at this. Okay, how do I do this with just one hand? I guess I just, oh crap, not like that. Don't tell Becca. Okay, we probably need two. So we have been having BLTs throughout the homestead or the greenhouse before, but uh, this, the reason this is exciting is this plant we planted from seed, uh, I we believe in January. And so here we are producing uh, really at the start of growing season. And that bad boy is spitting out tomatoes for us already. We also have more over there. So that's an exciting milestone. It's like the tomato is the ultimate garden vegetable to make you feel like, okay, I'm doing good. All right, now we're gonna go outside and get to the video. All right, as we begin this, um, I just wanna say, first of all, that I value every single one of you subscribers and that I know that we all have differences. We have different talents, we have different political persuasions, whatever, I get it. Everyone is welcome here, okay? But the thing that we have to do in this country is we have to start speaking up. You know, if as a parent, if I don't correct my kids, if I don't tell them my values, then I just will not even have values. And I think that's what's happening. We are all are becoming way too delicate. And unfortunately, the last three years, I have been just absolutely, utterly disappointed with America collectively and how we have allowed evil and mandates and uh, really a usurpation of freedom. Um, and we, we let that all happen without any resistance. You know, I would say that uh, unfortunately our motto of the last three years was take my liberty, just don't give me death. Yeah, I said that right. That's our generation's motto. I mean, we got so grabbed with fear that in the name of fear, you know, we put something over our face and then we just, we just got scared and we allowed all of these principles of liberty and, and all of the traditions of our fathers and our forefathers and those who said, give me liberty or give me death. Suddenly for our generation, it was the exact opposite. Because in the name of fear, in the name of a sickness, we allowed them to just, just come and do whatever they wanted. You know, and we just barely got the Supreme Court who came and said, oh, wait a second. You know, all of you corporations that were mandating things on your employee, uh, yeah, that's not constitutional. I mean, that's a huge win for victory. You know, and as we all look at it, we're like, yeah, that, of course, that's crazy, you know? So I'd say 90 plus percent of Americans like, yeah, why, how can a corporation tell me what to do? But you know what? Be honest with yourself. Back when you had that, that diaper over your face, um, you know, and things were scary, did we still have the same gusto for liberty and and i'm not trying to make you feel bad if you didn't but what i'm getting at is that collectively we allowed stupid stuff to happen we we just abandoned principle and allow certain few voices to tell us what had to be done to tell us what science was and in and as a result we did not have science science is debate you know, if you go on and you see Twitter cut off half of the debate, they just, they just deplatformed them. That's not science. 
No, science is when you get one virologist with one opinion, and then you get, let the other virologist with the same credentials have another opinion. But you know what? We weren't even having uh, uh, virologists speaking. We had little tiny fact checkers that probably hadn't even graduated from school, and even if they had, had no world experience fact checking pe people like Gert and Dr. Malone and David McCullough. You know, so people with credentials were not even allowed at the table of ideas. That is not science. And what did the rest of us do? I don't know. I'm saying I don't think we did much. And as a result of it, fast forward, people lost their jobs. Um, people were told that things were going to be effective and safe and to do this for the greater good, save grandma. All of these things came about and they were a lie. We were lied to. And again, this is not a two-sided thing. Like there's not us and them when it comes to status of what we did and didn't do. We are all Americans. Every single one of us have family members and friends, people that we love who did both, okay? So it's not about that anymore. That's what this evil would want us to do is to be divided. Um, but that is what we are not to do, no. But what we need to do is we need to start speaking up because the way that this great evil was prevailed upon us is something that we need to set back and we need to be outraged. You know, every year for the 4th of July, we set our kids down and we watch episode number two of the HBO series on John Adams. So that episode is called Independence and it goes through the whole 1776 miracle, which it was over great debate and, and, and putting their lives on the line, they were willing, these, these early congressional patriots and heroes, they were willing to put it all on the line. Um, uh, as Benjamin Franklin said, we will, we'll sh we will surely either hang uh, together or we'll hang separate. You know, they, they knew that there was a gravity, uh, that there was, that there was um, an importance to what they were gonna do and they were willing to do so all the way up to and including death. Okay, we need to get back to that. <laughs> we need to get back to it quick. Because as I look around, America has just gone away from that. I mean, still on these different platforms, if you say certain things or if you go against certain narratives, your ability to pass an algorithm is, is lessened. And you know, I value every one of you subscribers and I value your friendship, but I have to at least during this independence time, this is America's month, this is America's day. Um, my little tiny, tiny, tiny voice has got to say, we have got to step up and do better. You know, I look at what's happening over in France <sighs> and I look at some of the way the ways that the mainstream media is covering that conflict. The whole the whole country's on fire. It's crazy. They had a media blackout today. I just saw a tweet from somebody that that says Macron is a dictator. You know, I I do not have access to information to know what is happening in my own country. Imagine how that would feel. Imagine if that happened here. Well, so, I mean, they just shut off, shut off the internet. And I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get the riots under control. So instead of listen to the people and don't get yourself in that kind of situation, just silence them. Well, really, I think that's what's happened to America the last three years. We have allowed ourselves to be silenced and, and it's not right. It's scary. And that's why I say America is in danger. So if we continue to allow stupid and to allow evil to permeate all around us, then why do we think that we're going to be any different than France? So let me shift gears. Like imagine if you were in France, um, knowing that your internet's down, which means probably all of your stores are down because there's no point of sale system on earth that works um, without the internet. So maybe the stores uh, accept cash. Um, you know, but a lot of them don't. Since all the shortages of, of COVID, a lot of people don't even accept cash. So if your internet's down, you're not buying food today if you're over in France. So imagine on your homestead and in your household if that were to happen. And let's just say, let's say this thing continued to get ugly and they shut it down for a week. Do you have a week's worth of food? So I just highlight how 
if we don't stand up for liberty, threading the needle, our way of life can immediately be impacted. And what we do on our homesteads and how we prepare and how we store up, all of that can make a difference on not disrupting food and water and security and fuel in our homesteads. And uh, that's a prepper way of life, baby. And you know what? It's not radical. It's something that we all should be thinking about. So just one other topic that's kind of related. Maybe it might seem slightly different, but I think it's related. Um, another issue with the Supreme Court that they came down on was that of Joe Biden pretending like he's King James himself and just saying, you know what? Uh, you don't have to pay your student loans back. Now, guys, uh, the last time I had mentioned uh, this on one of my social media uh, platforms, you know, a very nice, wonderful person. I know, I know her well. She was meaning well. Um, you know, I mentioned that, like, why on earth would someone else's student loans be, um, be my responsibility? And um, she came back and she just said, well, some of us can't afford to go to college. And, you know, I, I didn't say much back because I didn't want to be argumentative. But here on my channel, I can tell you what I really think. Um, you know what? School was expensive. I went to college. And you know what I did? Uh, I didn't have a student loan. What I had was my work ethic. I was delivering pizzas, relying on tips to make enough money to go through college. And it was tough. And I did. And so I made dang well that I got my grades, first of all, because I was paying for it. And I made dang well that my, uh, my degree was going to head somewhere. Otherwise, I wouldn't be there. I would be working. You know, I've, I've got four brothers and uh, none of them went to college. Well, guess what? All five of us have great jobs. All five of us. One went to college and has a great job. Four didn't go to college and has a great job. So you know what? When that came out, the first thing that I thought of is I thought of my brothers and I thought of how hardworking they are. They work as hard as I do. And I thought, really, what is happening here with Joe Biden's edict that, um, that student loans should be waived and, and they shouldn't have to make payments? Well, what is he saying? He's saying that my four brothers who worked immediately after high school, worked their butts off, that their tax dollars needed to go and subsidize people like me who went to college and come on, just, just, just put that through. I, I, for those of you who thought you were getting it waived, you were told a lie. Yes, it was a lie. Um, you're not my enemy. But the principle of having somebody else pay your bill is wrong. It is. Uh, think about it and teach your kids that. On this Independence Week and this Independence Month, you know, let us think about liberty and freedom. Uh, a free market is only free if it's free. And if we let things like that go, do we have a free country? The answer is no. I mean, thank you, heavens, that we, we had a court that cited on the rule of law and on the Constitution that my student loans wouldn't become someone else's problem because that isn't free markets. That's not capitalism. That's not freedom. Um, by the way, I... I said I went through without a student loan because I, I worked my butt off. So for those of you who might be in that predicament, I do wish you well. This is not harmful. Even if you don't agree, feel free to put in the comments um, your different perspective and everybody else be respectful of that. But otherwise, I think it's important that we start standing up for freedom. Okay, and then maybe threading the needle now a little bit more on that. So. Okay, so we have massive amount of students who are expecting off of a really campaign promises that uh, unconstitutional a declaration was made right before the, the election. Politicians aren't dirty, are they? Not at all. Um, but anyway, what that, what that has done is it's got a lot of very hardworking, um, decent, wonderful Americans used to not making those payments. So suddenly, as we have gone into this economic downturn, um, you know, where interest rates are going higher and it's really starting to affect con consumption, it's starting to affect the economy. Um, if you don't believe me, just go look at Airbnb. They posted their numbers. Their profits are down 50%, at least reportedly. I think there's a little bit of uh, uh, controversy on what the numbers are or are not. Airbnb surely doesn't want you to think that they're they're down 50%. <laughs> but, uh, but 
okay, so the, the rates have gone up, the economy is starting to see a little bit of effects of this inflation. Um, well, suddenly all these people with student loans, when the time comes and it's all worked out through the courts that they, yes, have to make their payments. You know, I, I heard a statistic that said the average payment for these student loans um, is $400. I mean, you think about that, we're talking about tens and tens of thousands of people that have student loans that haven't had to be making a payment that suddenly will have to. And these people will suddenly have to make a payment when, when money is already tight. So you heard my Liberty rant over there, but now here's my heart rant. I feel bad for them. Yeah, they, they got duped a little bit, but, but still that doesn't mean that I don't care for them. And what does it do? to a national economy when suddenly tens and tens and tens of thousands of people suddenly have $400 less to spend into the economy. You think those numbers are bad with Airbnb? Well, what kind of a hit will that take on hospitality? I mean, I don't know about you, but a $400 hit to the budget, that's it's kind of a big deal. Will that change eating habits? Will it change cruise line habits, Disneyland ticket habits? Uh, will it change uh, fancy watches and rings and dresses and shirt habits, purchasing habits? Of course it will. So what does that do to the economy when the economy already is in a struggling situation? So what I'm getting at is this whole debacle and really a lot of people probably got themselves into extra debt thinking that $10,000, well, all of their student loans and then $10,000 of their student loans is going to be forgiven. So if they bought into that lie, um, that campaign promise lie, then what they probably did, like most Americans, they probably went out and leveraged themselves. They probably went out and got other debt, spending the money that they were spending before on student loan payments, thinking they didn't have to. And that's, that's sad. So in other words, we allowed the principle of liberty to erode with a stupid campaign promise. And what it really did was just suckered people. At the end of the day, if you have to err on any side, err on the side of liberty. It's in our blood. It's, it's what our ancestors fought for. It's what this great nation was founded upon. But I'm afraid America's in danger. There are so many forces that are allowing this to happen. And you know what? The sad thing is, is there's a whole bunch of us good, well-meaning, liberty-minded people that are good people, but nonetheless, we allowed it to happen. You know, maybe as the history books are written, you know, this was a generation filled with good people who did nothing. We let it happen. Yeah, there's a lot of bad people running the show, a lot of shadow people running the show. But at the end of the day, who presided over it? Our generation did. We have no one to blame but ourselves. Are you just sending your kids to school and to college and, and then surprised when they come back with all these crazy socialistic ideas? Because that's what's happening in our schools and universities. Well, if we're not doing things to counteract that, whose fault is it that we are losing liberty in our generation, that we are presiding over it? Okay, guys, that's a hefty message, but on this Independence Day, I love the country. I, I, every year we go to the rodeo in Salina because it's you know one of the last places that freedom is, is proclaimed and stood up for is with the American cowboy. And going to that rodeo, oh my, the music playing, the announcer uh, is, you know, spouting off the patriotism, um, you know, the cowgirls, the, the cow princesses come in with the American flag and everyone in the audience just goes silent, the hands over the heart, uh, the national anthem is sung. And then yes, a prayer is said. Oh yeah, that is the 4th of July. It's a fantastic reminder and a fantastic teacher, a supplemental teacher to my kids of this great country. So please share this with other people. And uh, please, if you get a chance, Go share with your kids and your grandkids and your brothers and your sisters, your parents, uh, what you feel, uh, your thoughts about freedom and liberty. And uh, let's try not to let it die on our watch. All right, see you next video.